Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for your support. Okay, so this is a summer niche perfume blind buy haul that I did recently. All of these perfume are super long lasting. All of this perfume are beast mode. And all of this perfume are leaning for summer with exception of two of the perfume here. So now I have seven perfume right here all niche very expensive i'm just going to be a mention quickly go ahead and check out the video so the first one that i bought is anik Gutal, knew it at confidences so if you haven't seen the video please go check out the video this is for sure a win so the next perfume that i bought this is casa morati surge off italica this is a beautiful gourmand almondy goodness so i have a dedicated video so go ahead and check it out so that's what about number two number three is mikalev not vanille i have a dedicated video about this one as well absolutely love it this is more like a for fall and winter scent but nonetheless i could still wear this during summer next i have Mon Parfum Cristal from Martin Mikulev. I love this one so much. I have a dedicated video. If you haven't seen it, please go check it out here. So yeah, this is another win. Now let's talk about the three new ones that I haven't featured in my channel yet. Okay. Okay, so let's go with the first one. I have been eyeing this for the longest time and this is not a blind buy i smelled this in store this is memo tamarindo i smelled this in store a long time ago about last year before covid when i went to the mall this is the time where i was still wearing chanel coco mademoiselle you know narciso for her type of time so i went to i think neiman marcus and i get to smell memo and i remember tamarindo as this like beautiful beautiful beachy coconutty type of scent i fell in love right away and i have been wanting this and this has been in my wish list for a long 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 time and i finally got it and i don't know how i feel about this one you guys so first of all the notes that are listed in fragrantica are bergamot cardamom orange Middle notes are pineapple, jasmine, tuberose, peach, coconut, ylang ylang. Base notes are patchouli, vanilla, and benzoin. This is a super long lasting beast mode in performance, beast mode in projection, beast mode in sillage. It's so beast of a mode that it kind of gives me a headache. But this is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful perfume. I just think that this is a little bit too much for me. But let me talk about it. So the first thing that I smell from here is pineapple. The pineapple here reminds me of the pineapple in Go of Now Shine. It's like that zesty, juicy pineapple. But underneath the pineapple, I smell a lot of patchouli. I think this is why I don't enjoy this one as much because I don't remember it being too much patchouli. So imagine like pineapple and patchouli and it has this like underlying floral and then the worst part about this is that it has this powderiness that I don't enjoy. But nonetheless, I appreciate this and I think that this is such a beautiful perfume. I understand why this one is so popular because it is beast in performance. It's like beast. I wore this to work and I was kind of bothered by the smell of it. I think that this is a very like fill the room type of scent i don't know if i like to wear this to work but i also don't know if i like this to wear not to work okay let me explain this one reminds a little bit of a chanel coco mademoiselle so from that perspective i want to wear this to work because it does give the same vibe as coco mademoiselle except amped it up a lot more and add powderiness. And so the powderiness makes it a little bit more mature, a little bit more beast mode. This one fills the room a lot more compared to Coco Mademoiselle. Coco Mademoiselle also have that patchouli and citrusy, but I enjoyed that one a lot more. 
I find that this one's a little bit too much for me. I think it's because this one doesn't fit my personality. But I appreciate the perfume though. I think that this is such a good perfume. This is such a good buy. I assure you that this is a good buy. As long as you like a beast mode scent with the beast siage and beast performance, like beast projection. Um, what I smell the most is, like I said, pineapple, patchouli, and powdery floral notes. It does smell a little bit like Coco Chanel Mademoiselle, but it also doesn't smell like Coco Chanel Mademoiselle enough that you could justify keeping it. Now, the reason why I am not a big fan of this is because, number one, I don't want to wear this to work because it's too much. And number two, I don't want to wear this outside of work because to me, I associate the scent as work. And I don't even know if I want to wear this to go to the beach because... It is such a beast mode that I find it a little bit too much. Like I'd rather wear my Elang and Gold or like Girl on Terracotta to go to the beach or even Estee Lauder Bronze Goddess. Like I won't use this to go to the beach. So because of that, I think I'm going to pass this. Um, but then I think I'm going to try to keep it for a little bit more and then see how I feel about this. But for sure... Um, right now, uh, this is on the chopping block. So the next perfume that I bought <laughs> is Memo La Libella. So this one is beautiful, you guys. This one is also beast in performance, beast in sillage, beast in projection. I just love how Memo is. Like, I could tell that this is a very high quality high performance and very 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 nice i'm utterly impressed with this house i'm very impressed it's just that this one has patchouli so that's why i'm uh, not a big fan of it but this one this is beautiful so i also smelled this before and i thought that this one smells pretty similar to narciso rodriguez for her the other toilet bottle the black bottle but after I wear this, I realized that it's different enough that you could justify owning both. But it does share the same vibe, the same, like, you know, family style, same DNA-ish. It's a musky, floral, vanilla. First impression, I did not like it. It smells like hair, hair oil gel, like hair oil. I don't know why. I think it's because... Or hair oil uses a lot of musk and this one has a whole lot of floral musk that makes me reminds of a hair oil but like I said the performance is amazing and I wore this to my friend's birthday party and I absolutely love how this performs. I could smell it throughout the whole time and it was a house birthday party and I was there for like a good eight hours and this one lasts and project the whole entire time. I was utterly impressed. Before the birthday party, I'm not gonna lie, I was going to declutter this, but I was really, really impressed of how this is. And I think I'm gonna keep this for sure. So the notes that are listed for Grantica are coconut, orchid, rose, peony. Middle notes are vanilla, patchouli, jasmine, labdanum. And base notes are incense, tobacco leaf, and precious woods. So yeah, the opening, when you smell it from the, the bottle, it does smell like a hair oil. But as you spray it on, it becomes this beautiful, airy, vanilla, musky, with floral and coconutty. So in a way, that airy, vanilla, with coconutty, Reminds me a little bit of Ilang and Gold from Martin Mikolev. If you love that one, you're gonna love this. If you think that one smells like nail polish, you don't have it here. It becomes more like a hair oil type of vibe instead of a nail polish. If you enjoy that, you're gonna love, love, love Memo Lalibella. This one smells closer to Narciso Rodriguez for her. But the way the sillage works, the way the projection works, the way it behaves, it's very, very similar to Ilang and Gold. Yeah, this is really, really nice. I don't know if I'm going to keep this forever, but for now it's a keeper. 
I just wish that I could like this because I don't enjoy patchouli and I don't enjoy powdery notes and this one is pretty heavy in both of them and that's why it doesn't work out for me so this is the last perfume I actually bought this two from Erin Sullivan Beauty okay so um, this is Ducida Paris this is the first Ducida that I have I actually tried the whole Ducida house with the exception of a few, I should make a dedicated video. I generally really, really enjoy her creations. They're very feminine. They're like a work of art. They're very romantic, I guess. It's very floral heavy, very feminine. So I tried all of it and I've been wanting to get Dusita Isara, but it's so expensive. So I decided not to get it yet. And I found um, Aaron she's decluttering this so i thought you know what i never try this but i love all of the ducida house that i've tried all the ducida perfume and ducida house so i decided why not i'm just gonna blind buy it if i don't like it i'm gonna let it go so this is moonlight in chiang mai i don't know how i feel about this um i think this is a love and hate but i don't think this is me First of all, the bottle is amazing. This is a very high quality perfume. All Ducida perfumes are very high quality. This one's Projection and Siage Monster. This one, to me, a little bit of a unisex leaning towards masculine, but you have to like three notes. You have to like citrus, you have to like woods, this is not sandalwood. This is like an teak wood type of scent. And you must love Baccarat Rouge type of scent. So if you don't like any of those three, do not get this. I find that this is like probably the worst Ducita I've ever smelled. And I, it's unfortunate that I bought the full bottle. But nonetheless, it still is a work of art. It still is beautiful. I could see if I keep this, this is gonna grow on me. I know that for sure. And I know that this is going to be one of those banger perfume for a lot of people. This one is super, like I said, projecting super, 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 super good. It's just that this one doesn't fit my personality. I'm not a Baccarat Rouge personality type of person. That's why I don't have a full bottle of it. To me, Baccarat Roots has that, that dentist office note, and then the extract Baccarat Roots is a little bit too expensive for me. And this one is like, it's like it takes the Baccarat Roots DNA without the dentist office note, and then add this beautiful, beautiful yuzu citrusy note and teak wood. And the teak wood makes it a little bit more masculine, but I just don't enjoy the sharpness that resembles Baccarat 540. I mean, I love Cloud, but that's because it's like way toned down and they add a lot of gourmandy, like coconut -y scent. It makes, makes it more airy and beautiful, but it doesn't have that like bites, like dentist office bites of that Baccarat. This one has the bites, even though it doesn't come to me as a dentist office note, but it has that similar bites. So yeah, you guys, if you haven't tried Lucita Moonlight in Chiang Mai, I suggest you to sample this, but do not blind buy it. This is a unisex leaning masculine perfume. Remember, you must like citrus, yuzu, you must like Baccarat 540, and you must like teak wood. Yeah, so it, it's this is like one of the perfume that I'm not sure if this is me. I'm still gonna explore the house of Ducita more and maybe get another full bottle. It's just that it's not gonna be Moonlight and Chiang Mai. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Bye-bye.